Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. This is Vincent Chan. In this lecture, we're going to start a new series on two-stage CMOS RPAN. So actually, it's the new series on the CMOS RPAN. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you five lectures around two-stage CMOS RPAN. Followed by Casco CMOS up and Foldy Casco CMOS up and and lastly, I'm going to teach you rail to rail CMOS up and so I hope you really can learn something and lay a strong foundation through this CMOS up and series. The first lecture is the easiest on the low frequency analysis for the CMOS RPAN. Let's start with the two-stage CMOS RPAN. The differential stage and the common source gain stage. The both stages are biased by the, the two kind of sets of current mirror composed of Q8, 7, and 6. So this is the biasing current circuit, bias current. The current mirror of 8 and 7 supply the bias current of the differential stage, which is the 2IQ. Another current mirror of Q8 and Q6 supply the bias current of the common source gain stage, the current going to the Q5. Differential, first stage, input stage, and gain stage. The upstage. So usually the CMOS RPN is designed in the low power application. So of course you can add, if you're a designer, you can add the third stage, the upstage. For for the 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 VOSI, so-called very large scale integration, very large scale integrated circuit, then we prefer just two stage design. Input stage, gain stage. So simple. Low frequency analysis by by what? By inspection. By inspection. So because this is the advanced courses, kind of the, the more kind of advanced. So I expect you already have the solid, strong foundation when you see this. Right? So you're supposed to be able to solve this by inspection, maybe within 10 seconds. All right, so one, one, two, two, done. Over. Right? Done. What did I say? I said one, one, two, two. GM1 times R1, GM2 times R2. So where is GM1? This is GM1. Decided by the transconductance of Q1. An R1, capital R1, is the parallel combination between what? Between 2 and 4. The second stage, the GM5, GM2, the capital GM2, is decided by the individual transconductance of Q5. A capital R2, and parallel combination of the 5 and 6. Right? Can you follow me? I want you to pause for three for 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 three minutes. I maybe one minute is is long enough to see if you can follow me. So if you can follow me, you can just just go ahead, okay? Just move on. If you don't, you have to pause. Let me ask you, in phase or out of phase for the first stage? Huh? I didn't think about this. In phase or out of phase? So where's the negative sign? What about the common source? In phase or out of phase? So make sure you think about this before you move on, okay? 
Low frequency, let's talk a little bit detail, okay? But I'm not going to cover too much detail, but just let's quickly go over this before we talk about high frequency analysis. So you, have, you are supposed to have no question around the low frequency domain before you move on to a high frequency, which is the subject of next lecture, okay? So VD differential, because the non-inverting, inverting, non-inverting non on your right, inverting on your left, right? So current is going to go what-wise? It's going to go counterclockwise from 3 o'clock to the 9 o'clock. And then total source resistance 2 over GM, 1, almost low. VD. And then what? Then the current is going to go this first step, first step. Second step. Ah, yes. A third counterclockwise. And then what's four? Mirror. Mirror. This is the current mirror. And five. Two IS, adding two IS together. So two IS equals GM1, VD. This is number five. So what about the total resistance? Because I explained this, we solved this in detail. In other lecture, in the other course, okay? I remember it's the fundamental of analog integral circuit. Okay, the result? The parallel combination of two and four. Two and four. So if you have any question around this, then go back to the lesson you learned from other courses. But now, the capital GM1 is this GM, GM1, individual transconductance of Q1. So capital R1 is the parallel combination between R2 and R4. Norton equivalent. Here's Norton. So Norton, the green Norton, downward, going down, GM1 VD, R1. So there is a negative sign. Why? Because the VI2 divided by VD is negative GM1 times R1. There's a negative sign. Second stage is easy. Common source. It's common source. You don't need me for this. Okay, you can solve this by yourself. The capital GM2 is the individual transconductance of Q5. So there's another G negative sign. There's another negative sign. So both negative signs got canceled out. So that's why the negative side wasn't show up. When I first asked you to do the analysis by inspection to demonstrate the outcome, got canceled out, right? So make sure you fully capture this without any question at all before you move on to the next lecture where I'm going to teach you the high frequency analysis, and then I'm going to teach you offset, how to cancel the systematic offset of this CMOS R band. So afterwards, I'm going to highlight the Miller compensation and focus on the zero, how zero will play in the frequency domain. So look forward to seeing you in the future CMOS R band lecture series. Thanks for watching.